Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to do something a little bit different than we normally do, and we're going to try to save a big block of aluminum that is the fixture for my YXZ turbo manifolds. So, why we need to save it, I was drilling and attempting to tap a little bit deeper M8125 threads into this, and we have a broken tap in the block of aluminum. So you can see with the charring on it, I had tried to weld a bolt to it, tried to drill the tap, tried to do everything that I had in or at my disposal to attempt to remove this tap from the block of aluminum unsuccessfully. So in doing a little bit of research, we are going to end up using chemistry to hopefully dissolve this aluminum or dissolve this steel tap out of the block of aluminum. So what we're going to do is to take some alum, which from what I have read, this mixed with water and boiled will hopefully dissolve the tap out of the block of aluminum without destroying the block of aluminum. And at this point, I don't really have anything to lose. And if I can't get the tap out, then I will have to make a new fixture block anyways. So I might as well give this a shot and see what happens. So what we're going to do is to take both the block and this Pyrex bowl that I bought and take them over to the restroom, fill the bowl up with water until it submerges the hole where the tap is broken off in. And then we can pour this one pound, ooh, one pound of alum powder into it, get it to boil, drop this aluminum block into it, and hopefully chemistry does its thing and it dissolves the steel tap out of the block of aluminum. So now we have our py Pyrex container that has a decent amount of water in it. And if I take the block of aluminum and place it into the bowl, you can see that it does submerge the hole that the tap is broken off in. So now we will need to add the alum to this container of water. And in the bit of research that I did, I wasn't able to find a... Uh, an actual ratio that we're going to mix this to. So this is a decent amount of water and I know you're supposed to saturate the water with the alum powder. So I'm going to dump the entire container of alum into it, mix it around and start heating this and hopefully boiling it before too long. Hopefully specific heat doesn't work to my disadvantage too much right now. So let's go ahead, mix the alum into it and we can start boiling this and getting ready to drop the piece of aluminum in. Now, the reason that we are using a Pyrex bowl and the reason that I'm using a, an old ruler to mix this right now is this solution will dissolve steel. So as I, uh, or as we progress through this hopefully successful chemical process, I don't want to have the vessel that we're doing this in dissolve, nor do I want to run the chance of dissolving a screwdriver or something like that by mixing it that way. So use a piece of plastic, use a glass bowl, and all will hopefully be well there. <clears throat> so I've poured uh, two thirds or so of the container of alum into this, I'm just stirring it up a bit more. And I'll continue adding it in and stirring it around until we have the entire container of alum poured into this vat of water. And at that point, we can turn the stove on and start boiling the solution. All right, now I have this solution mixed as well as I possibly can. There's still a few residual granules down at the bottom, but it is mixed as well as I can mix it and it is as saturated as I can make it. As you see, I dumped the entire container of alum into this. So 
At this point, I believe we are good to turn the burner on and to start heating this solution up to the point where it will boil and then we place the block of aluminum into it and start allowing chemistry to do its thing. And I'm going to go ahead and place the block into the solution. Turn the burner on. I'm going to place the block in now so that way there isn't a massive thermal shock as the water is warm, the bowl is warm, and the block of aluminum is cool. I don't want there to be a big shock and end up breaking the uh, piece of Pyrex and having the solution spill everywhere. So here we go, right front. And it's turned on. Let's wait and see what happens. And we're getting some heat into the burner now. And the block of aluminum is obviously still cold, as is the solution. So it's going to take it a little while to heat up, but hopefully as we start to get some heat through the solution and through this aluminum block, we'll start to see some bubbles come out and that will signify that there is some sort of a reaction happening. So you might be wondering why I have just a random range in my shop and I gotten it for free a few years ago to use for some powder coating experiments. And the whole thing still works fine, just plugs right into my 220 extension cord, which plugs into my 220 outlet on the wall there. And I haven't used it for quite a, <coughs> quite a while, <coughs> excuse me, but for something like this, hopefully it ends up being quite worth it and uh, we can get this piece of steel dissolved out of this block of aluminum. So the one concern that I had with the way that that block of aluminum was sitting and the Pyrex came true. So it just popped and the solution went everywhere. So my concern was it was sitting on four corners, consolidated pressure, consolidated force. Maybe as it heated up, it was going to cause an issue and it surely did. So I guess I go back to the store to buy another container and hopefully I can find some alum there and we can try this a second time. After the first mishap, we are back for attempt number two. This time I bought an aluminum pan instead of the glass bowl, and the piece also sits flush on the bottom rather than having four points applying pressure onto it. So this time there should be no chance that we'll have an explosion again, or not an explosion, but a fracture of the vessel containing the solution and everything, and hopefully it works out a little bit better. So, as you can hear, everything's heating up. And I'm going to go eat lunch and check on this in a little bit and see if we're starting to dissolve some steel. So after a little bit of time, we can see a ton of bubbles coming out of that hole, which is a very good sign. Bubbles mean that there's a reaction happening, and in theory, that means that the steel is being dissolved. So. We will give it some more time, give it a little bit more heat, and let's see, let's see if this actually does work. Another little update, probably about half hour or so into this process at this point, and I did have to add a little bit more water. As you see, there is steam coming off, which steam obviously means water is evaporating, so may have to end up topping off your solution from time to time, but not a big deal. I have this little measuring cup, mixed up some additional solution, which I tried to match the opaque that the original solution was and it worked out pretty well. But we can still see a ton of bubbles coming out and let me throw a glove on real quick. And if we pull the block out, you can see maybe that that's starting to dissolve away. So. This is actually working quite well, and I'm very excited about that because I really didn't want to remake this block. So we will leave this in here for a bit longer and periodically check it, periodically add solution if necessary, and by the end of the day, I should have saved this aluminum block. Mixing up a little bit more of the solution, and we are still chugging away with uh, dissolving this piece of tap out of there. It's 
working very well. I can see some bits of steel fragment floating around in the solution in the, uh, in the bowl here, or the pan rather. And I'm shocked with how well this is working. So I'll finish mixing up this bit of solution, put it into the pan, and we'll keep going with this. We're a few hours into this, and it's still bubbling away. You can see bubbles popping up out of there. And it's taken a little bit longer than I expected it to, but it's also a pretty large piece of steel that I'm dissolving, so that's, I guess, to be expected. So going to wait for a little while longer, I guess, go through the rest of the alum that I have. I'm down to my last container after the first pound that I bought ended up as this chalky mess all over the floor that will have to be cleaned up later. But uh, still making good progress. Everything's going well. And got another piece of glass on the floor. Go ahead and keep seeing how this works. So it's been a long day and we're still not quite there with the tap yet, but it has made significant progress. So pull the block out and you can see maybe some of the bubbling down in there. So this is definitely working. It's definitely dissolving the steel, but it's just slow going and I ran out of alum. So I'll need to get some more and put some fresh water in, come back another day, because I've been out here for hours and hours at this point in time. And it, this will get it done, just not quickly whatsoever. So I will come back in the next few days and keep going at this even more. And I'll catch up with you guys then. And hopefully we can get the rest of this tap out without any issues. And we're back for the second day of trying to dissolve this broken tap out of the YXZ head flange block. So I went ahead and got a few more little containers of alum. So hopefully five is enough to get this dissolved the rest of the way out of this aluminum block. If not, then I have to get more, keep repeating the process. I guess without further ado, let me get the range set up the rest of the way and get some water in our little pan, get some heat going through it, and let's start dissolving this tap again. And we're started up again with the alum water solution in a block of aluminum. So, still warming up. You can see some bubbles coming out of the hole currently. So, the reaction is happening again. And now the waiting game begins. So, let's hope that this doesn't take all day. But if it does, it does. So, lesson learned not to break taps off. But it is what it is. So I'll update you guys in a little bit with whatever progress happens. After another entire day's worth of soaking this YXZ head flange fixture block in my water alum solution, made some progress, but it is not completely, or the old tap is not completely burnt out. Ooh, let me wipe the fog off the camera there. So sitting in here and same as before, have been adding water and adding a little bit of alum each time that the level goes down due to evaporation. So let me pull this block out and clean the hole out and then I can show you guys exactly how far we did make it. So still with the block hot, I sprayed the hole out with some compressed air or 
air out of the compressor rather. And let's see if we can see. Yeah, you can still see there's a little bit of tap left down in the hole. So it's time for me to get out of here for the day. And it's also 85 degrees in the shop. So those two things combined, I don't wanna be in here any longer. And it's been all day that I've been nursing this water alum solution. So I'm going to try to leave this block in the water alum for this evening. I'll come in tomorrow morning. And at that point, if we still don't, uh, don't have the tap burnt the entire way out, I measured the depth that the tap is recessed in the block still. And it measures from the surface of the block, 19 and some odd millimeters down to where the remnants, remnants of the tap are located. So with that in mind, what I may do, if I can't get this last little bit of tap out, will probably be to buy a time cert kit and to time cert the six holes that will fasten the head flange down to this block. And actually that isn't a bad idea to do anyways, as those threads will be the most used on this fixture with bolts going in and out to bolt head flanges on to remove them, so on and so forth. Steel threads will be a little bit more robust than aluminum ones and will hopefully not have this issued ever again with this block. So we will leave this in the solution overnight and fingers crossed that when I come in tomorrow, I pull the block out and there is no more tap left in there. So I will catch you guys then and report back with what the state of the block is. We are back for the final day of trying to fix this YXC fixture block. So as you can see, the stove is not here anymore. I moved it out of the way, pulled the block out. And unfortunately, the tap did not 100% dissolve out of the hole. So here's what we're left with. There's some discoloration from the water alum mix, but that will come off no big deal. You can see that there is some orange brownish staining there that's rust staining and if I shine the light maybe you guys can see yeah I think you can see there you can still see there's a little bit of tap left let it soak overnight spent two entire days trying to burn the tap out and that's as far as I got and I am done allotting any more time to try to do this so you may ask yourself, what is the solution to have threads in that hole if you can't run a tap and the holes obviously wallowed out for me, you know, trying to hit the remnants of the tap with a punch, so on and so forth. And that is right here. This is a time cert kit. So what a time cert is, <clears throat> is a little steel threaded insert that it's whatever thread they use on the outside and then M8125 on the inside. And you go through a system or a series of steps where you initially drill, then you chamfer, then you tap, then you drive the time cert in. And I really like these things much more than helicoils, um, especially if you break a, a casting or something along those lines that has fluid going around it. You seal these up very well with some, I usually use green Loctite as your replacing thread, so there's no reason to have the insert, have the, or have the insert be possibly removable. So we will go ahead and follow that same order of operations and that same system to put new threads into our hole here. So the first order of business will be to clean the block up as I want to get it all nice and pretty looking again rather than having all this water alum crystallization over it. Once we have that done, we can go ahead and start the time cert process. All right, the block is cleaned up and ready to have the time cert installed. So the first thing that we need to do is to drill our hole out to the appropriate 
size. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Now we have our hole drilled to the size of the drill bit that they provide. And the next thing we need to do is to put our chamfer on. So they have this nice little chamfer tool that the peg fits down in the hole and these four flutes on it will cut a nice chamfer in. And they also have right here a stop. So it cuts the chamfer just as deep as it needs to be cut. So go ahead. And we have our chamfer cut now. So go ahead and shake the excess shavings off. And now we can go ahead and tap. So they don't give the thread size with it, but the way that everything is set up here, their drill bit and the chamfer tool and everything else set the hole up to be the perfect size to put our threads into it. So let me go grab a tap handle and some WD-40 and we'll go ahead and put these threads in. And we are now bottomed out and I'm obviously not going to force this as that's how I got myself into the situation in the first place so pull the tap out and a good way to tell if you're getting good threads is you should be able to turn the tap out by hand like I just did so we're done with the tap now and that means it is now time to install our time cert. Okay. And here is the insert driver. And kind of just looks like a square drive with some threads on it, but it isn't quite that simple. You thread your insert down onto it and it will eventually stop. And check and make sure that I have an appropriate depth, which I most certainly do. So prior to installing this, I'm going to go over and blow the hole out to get whatever WD-40 is left down in there and whatever chip is in there out. So that way there's no weird reactions with the green Loctite and there's no residual chip or anything weird down in the hole that could possibly bind up this insert and have it not work properly. All right, now we are ready to install our thread insert. So I'm gonna take some green Loctite, put it onto the insert. I like to be pretty liberal with this as we obviously aren't going to be removing the insert. So there's no reason to play nice and to not put a bunch of Loctite on it. So. We're now ready to go. I'll use the same tap handle and get it started. Go ahead, thread it down in, and you keep tightening. In this case, I'll tighten kind of until I feel this bottom out, which I don't think they necessarily recommend, but that's how we're going to do it. Slowly remove tool and there we go so we now have threads on top of a broken tap which not the most ideal way for this to happen but this is the real world and this is how things happen practically sometimes rather than in theory or in an ideal situation. This obviously wasn't an ideal situation from the get-go, but I made the best out of the out of the situation that I was dealt, out of the hand I was dealt rather. So 
once this green Loctite dries, these steel threads, I'll never have any issues with those. And I may even go ahead and put these threaded inserts in the rest of these holes, although I guess I am one time search short, but I can at least do four of the remaining five holes. That way I'll never have any issues with any of these other holes and everything will be good to go. Finally, after all of my self-made trials and tribulations with this fixture block, it is ready to go back into service. So I went ahead and I put time certs in all aside from one of the holes as I was one time cert short, but I ordered a quantity of 10 of the exact same time certs that I put in the other holes. So those will be here in a couple of days. I can throw that one in real quick and then get to building YXZ manifolds, finally. So I am so thrilled that this is finally done. Like I said, it is not the most ideal way to solve this problem as if I was able to get that piece of tap out, I would be a little bit happier, but it can live down in that hole. I don't really care. Forgive and forget, out of sight, out of mind. So all is well here. You can see all the certs in. You can see what they look like. And they do sit below the surface of the parent material. So there'll be no interference with the head flanges to those time certs causing them to do anything weird as I'm holding manifolds up all as well. So after all of that, I know this probably was a little bit of a boring video watching me cook a block of aluminum and then drill a few holes, but hopefully it's still a little bit uh, informative for you guys, a little bit educational, and maybe give you an idea of how to fix threads if you ever end up in the same situation that I was with this. So with all that being said, it's going to be the end of this video. So as always, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.